This is Victoria's Pride March, the day when the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex and queer community takes to the street in a visible show of pride and solidarity. As gay rights have become increasingly accepted by our society, there has been a growing recognition that the needs of this community are not being met by the healthcare system. To address this problem, an organisation called Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria has been formed. Well, Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria has been going for about three years and the real aim of the unit is to ensure that gay and lesbian people get equity in healthcare, I suppose. The gay community is made up of an extremely diverse group of people, but from a health perspective they don't seem so very different from heterosexual people. What are the special health needs of this community? Well, they don't experience very different physical health from anybody else, obviously, but they do have very well documented health deficits and they're mostly in the area of kind of mental health issues like depression and maybe self-harm and also alcohol and drug use. And so we see those things as the things that um, really come from being marginalised or um, discriminated against or being uncertain about how you'll be received in any given situation. Being gay or lesbian, you carry that around with you 24-7. You know, every time you meet somebody, you're having to make that decision about, do I come out or don't I? Is this safe or isn't it? Will I be accepted or won't I? Every day, you know, and it's just, you know, you become very adept at uh, um, trying to suss out and read that, and that's a huge, really big thing to carry around with you. We know that they underuse services and we feel that that is because of a kind of reluctance to put yourself on the line. If you actually want to go to a service for something else, maybe you can just hide the fact that you're gay and lesbian, but we'd suggest that in many instances you wouldn't get the best service by hiding what's a significant part of yourself. We're trying to address that and make services more actively welcome, I guess. The role of Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria is to collect information about gay and lesbian health, produce health promotion resources, help health services provide more appropriate care, provide diversity training to healthcare organisations and to advocate politically for gay and lesbian health. The main message we have to address is to kind of challenge that idea that we treat everybody the same so that nothing special is required because in our experience treating everybody the same means treating everybody as heterosexual and that does have very subtle impacts. You might have for example say a fact sheet about men with prostate cancer and there's nothing in it that says anything about homosexual or heterosexual but it's quite clear reading between the lines that if you're talking about sex after prostate surgery, that it's about um, heterosexual sex and not about some of the things that might concern gay men. So there's kind of a gap in there that needs to be addressed. As part of their campaign to educate healthcare professionals about providing inclusive care to their gay and lesbian clients, Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria has released a series of posters. We've had a lot of victories really and we've produced several posters that have been very successful. Probably one of our really nice projects was going around training in hospitals and at some point mentioning that the law had changed and now gave same-sex partners next of kin status. And hospital people would always be gobsmacked by that and say, wow, I didn't know that, we better write this down. So we got support from the Victorian Law Foundation to produce a poster and as a result of that poster being launched, we've had requests for numerous copies of it from lots of rural hospitals, hospitals all over Victoria. just isn't difficult to deal with this stuff. We don't ask people who maybe have moral views that homosexuality isn't right to change those views. We simply look at the safety and equity aspects of it and say, look, if you have a few posters in your waiting room, if you have a look at the forms that you give people at the beginning to see if everybody can be reflected on that form, if you're just careful with your language, you'll have a more receptive group of people using your services.
Well, I think we can make a difference. And the reason I think we can make a difference is that the majority of people out there kind of agree with what we say. And so it's not the three of us plugging away, trying to make the whole service change. In fact, there are a whole lot of people that are on that program already. And what we see ourselves as doing is putting resources um, into the hands of those people who are really good advocates in their own workplaces or maybe backing up something they're trying to do with training or simply adding some legitimacy, maybe with the research, for example, to what they're trying to do. So I actually don't f ever feel that it's not winnable, but, you know, it's a long, slow process and culture change always takes a long time.